let's go. We'll be talking about um, normalizing data formats, um, which is transforming content uh, before ingest, um, um, because it doesn't meet exactly our, our uh, formats policy. Um, and how we managed to, to um, document and formalize our policies at the National Library of France, um, which is an ongoing process. Um, so for this talk, um, I'll be speaking with uh, my two dear colleagues here, Alex Brice, uh, who will be for the occasion representing, uh, representing um, the collection managers, and Thomas uh, Ledoux, uh, who will, for the occasion too, will be the IT guy. Uh, and here we, we, we use the term signal specialist uh, to indicate some experts uh, on, on specific uh, content types. So I'll, I'll go through a quick reminder of what is BNF, how um, we built up a, an organizational um, an organization to, to decide upon um, digital preservation and normalization. Um, that is to say, the, 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 the previous episodes, and I, I left the, leave the floor to my colleagues to, to tell you two of the f six stories that we have in our paper about normalization. Um, so BNF, the National Library of France, um, as, as all um, national institution libraries, um, have, has the, the mission to collect by legal deposit um, all kinds of cultural heritage objects, um, either produced, uh, published, uh, or important in France. And it also has uh, several um, special collection departments, um, music, maps, um, performing arts, etc., cetera, um, that collect um, um, content at an early stage, earlier stage of production uh, to document the creative process, which means some specific choices in terms of data formats. I wanted also to, to remind you that BNF is an, um, a huge institution, probably more than you could expect. We are more than 2,200 uh, agents. And one of our tasks here is um, find the right skills inside our own institutions and find the ones that, that sh should solve our problems here. So um, now to, to what you see here behind is a part of the digital roadmap of uh, the, the, the National Library of France published last year um, as an imaginary, imaginary map and um, we, we like to present ourselves uh, as the, the, the initial, the, the data expertise, the format expertise that was in place in the beginning of this 2010, like the little black figures in the middle of the image. Uh, that is to say, a handful of um, digital enthusiasts, but rather isolated, and that took decisions on uh, an occasional basis. So this, uh, started to change in 2015 when a report was issued uh, in BNF about digital preservation governance and the report had two major outcomes. First, the creation of a committee um, that is specialized in um, structural orientations and decisions about digital preservation. And the second is the renovation of what we come to call the, the data formats for digital preservation um, here which um, started its, its uh, renewed life in 2019. So I won't extend too much on the, the, the work, the methods of the BNF data formats for digital preservation, because we had a, an OPF webinar last year on the subject, and uh, I want to, uh, to move one step further on in the, the discussion. Um, just to remind you that it's a pretty important group, more than 30 per persons, uh, agents from 13 organizational units, um, some support from, from some support departments, uh, the IT department, the metadata department, um, the cooperation department, etc., but also from special collections that we had to recruit uh, um, actively uh, to, to get some expertise and some, some 
uh, reference in, in, the, in the departments. And we, we deal so far with uh, eight uh, different content types. Uh, oops, what happened here? Um, and I just wanted to say that this working group soon became a, a very privileged place to, um, to share uh, and exchange digital um, culture at large and discuss and reflect on our own practices regarding um, digital preservation and digital content at large. Um, and, well, the, the, the main outcome uh, was this, this report published last year too, uh, which is a summarize in, in, in like something like 80 pages, the knowledge gathered by the BNF uh, about its data formats policy what it prefers and what it manages actively and how uh, the, the, the process to, to manage data formats. So that was the previous episode. Um, and now I'll, I'll leave the floor to Thomas to say what this is an ideal world, what uh, could go wrong. <laughs> okay. So with the, with the advent of newborn digital formats coming from our donors or from acquisition, as exemplified by this uh, donation from uh, the archives of the filmmaker uh, Isaac uh, Amos Gitai, uh, we will see that many contents that come to our library, library uh, doesn't fit into our policy. So the main question was how we do we cope with those, those things and we have Various alternatives, refusing the content, <laughs> which is not really what we want to, to request a new transfer of the content, uh, acknowledge that there is a new format and that we have to adapt us to the format, and the last, but probably the most interesting for us, <laughs> just transforming the content to make it fit in. Uh, of course, taking such, such a decision of transforming a content cannot be taken alone, because it's a huge decision, and you'd better, you'd better have a collegially uh, decision on that. So in the next slide, I just present how it worked on this last uh, example of transforming content. If you want to be more interesting in the other decision we make, you have to go to the paper just to read it. <laughs> so our first use case is the fact that we discover lost in the middle of our content some PSD files, Photoshop document files, and those were, of course, not, not great for our, our policy. We have three different collections handling those uh, PSD files, but the uh, Amos Gita archive, as I said before, the photographs of Michel Laurent, as well as posters from Philippe Abelois, and those contains uh, those PSD files. Uh, one astonished fact is that the three collections arrive uh, almost at the same time, and we have to face this, uh, uh, this problem at the same time and give the collection manager a solution to handle those. So the first step was to look what, what is special about PSD files and why, how can we cope with it. So the main advantage of a PSD file is that it uses layers so you can combine uh, raster images, uh, text, uh, transparency, things like that, when you create the document. Of course, if you want to migrate this information into an image, you will lose this composition and flatten the layers, and we, we have to know if this is acceptable or not. So, because, we, we, because it's a proprietary format, we have to use the, the software that, use it, that created it, Photoshop, to transform the, the images and so that we don't mess up with the other characteristic of the image like fonts or colorimetry or things like that. So we have various senior technical scenarios in order to transform those images and that we, that we present to our, our colleagues and they had to take a decision on that so that they will ask us to do the, to do the, the matters and Alex will present you how we can we, cho we choose that. Thank you, Thomas. Um, so while studying those files, we um, realized 
that uh, they had the um, same file format, but uh, actually very different contents in uh, each of these um, collections. Um, I'll start with the uh, Apple War collection. Uh, the PSDs were sketches uh, made by a graphic designer to create a poster with uh, layers of text and um, uh, raster images. For uh, the um, Gitai collection, uh, the, the PSDs were photographs of a shooting uh, with layers, but um, uh, these layers were not active and uh, it was quite disturbing for us because we, we didn't know uh, what um, the creator of these photographs intended to do with, uh, with these layers. And uh, finally, for the Laurent collection, it was um, uh, digitized book covers uh, with no layers and no trace of modifications and um, somehow uh, the PSD file, file format sorry, uh, was uh, irrelevant uh, for these contents. So obviously uh, we had different contents. We had to process these files according uh, to, the, um, to their content type. And uh, it was quite easy for the digitized images uh, since we had a long experience in that field. Uh, but for the other two collections, we were in a dead end. We could not uh, found, um, find a, a f an open file format to preserve all the information uh, contained in the PSDs. So uh, we turned uh, to collection managers and we asked them uh, what properties and what functionalities were important to preserve. It was very interesting. Uh, the, um, for the Apple Rock collection, uh, the collection manager had, have a, has a strong will uh, to build a reference collection for graphic creations. And she's, um, she was interested in keeping all traces of the creative process. On the other hand, uh, the collection manager for Gitai Collection had a very different point of view and she valued uh, the, the, the images only as a testimony of um, uh, the represented events on the photographs. So on one hand, uh, we had to preserve an artifact uh, for Apple War Collection and the other hand, only a documentary object for Gitai Collection. And, um, at this time, it became very clear uh, what we had to do. Uh, it was uh, much easier uh, to choose a transformation, to choose a target file format, and to decide whether to keep or not uh, the original files. So at the end of this use case, we learned um, that uh, norm normalization, data normalization is not based on the original file format, at least not only, not always, and that the collection manager has the final call in the transformation decisions. And uh, we also learned uh, that it is um, both required and fun to work uh, in such a collaborative way, uh, sharing competencies uh, with each other and learning from each other. Now the second use case. We are still um, talking about the Apple War collection, but this time from a different point of view. Um, this uh, collection contains the posters, final versions of posters in PDF, and also several sketches uh, for each poster uh, in different uh, file formats, PDF, TIFF, and JPEG. Honestly, uh, we didn't understand why the creator used so many file formats for uh, these sketches. <laughs> uh, the, the donor was not available. He, he was not willing to work with us. We, we <laughs> it's, it's still a mystery. Um, but um, we could have dealt with that and uh, uh, sorted the files by file format in order to process them. But again, uh, the collection manager had, um, had a strong demand. 
uh, regarding her access, she wanted all the sketches to be shown on the same uh, Gallica page. Uh, Gallica is our digital library. Uh, in a chronological order, so that the researchers could compare them with each other and have a good vision of the creative process. So, it implied to gather all the files in the same information package and we had a strong incentive for homogeneity, uh, which led us to transform the data. So since the transformation was decided, we have to find the right way of transforming them. Uh, so first we asked for the preservation experts to tell us the most valuable properties we have to take care of. And we add some criteria on the tools we will use so that we can spread those tools all over the library. So we have to be easy access and potentially automa automated. Then we gather everyone from our co little community and ask them how they will do it. And we come up with six different ways of transforming those files uh, to JPEG. Uh, and we ask everyone to document those process in using the same template for every, every other tools so that we can compare the different uh, methods and have a, an evaluation uh, of the methods based on the criteria um, so that we can take a, a decision. At the end of gathering all this information, we have a plenary session of the community to explain the different, uh, different possibilities and we end up with the solution. <laughs> at least our solution for this case. Uh, the main factors was that, that we wanted the solution to have good results, of course, and also to be able to be integrated in the IT infrastructure so we can give the, every collection manager the tool to transform it if they need to transform it another time. Um, as Bertra will show you, the goal is indeed to try to process all this transformation in a quite um, documented way so that we can uh, make progress on these uh, transformations. Thank you. Um, so, um, um, I won't spend too long on the, the two final slides because it's um, the process, uh, summarized process uh, with, uh, that, that we came out uh, with after these six different use cases. Um, um, I won't detail the, the, the steps that we, the six steps um, of the process that we, we used um, to um, start with a diagnosis and end up with a fully documented uh, normalization pro um, operation. Um, you see also um, we came out with a, a categorization from which is specific to us uh, that we can discuss of four different profiles, roles. Uh, the process manager we, we didn't talk about, which is the person, the agent responsible for the whole process on a specific uh, workflow uh, from acquisition to dissemination in our um, publishing tools. And we also provide this, this uh, racing matrix uh, that, that you're probably familiar with. Um, to determine who is, has to act when. Um, we also had a, a list of deliver deliverables, um, uh, standard deliverables, um, which are integrating into uh, the, the documents that, that the organization uh, produces for, for analog material. The decision and diagnosis form which integrates into the, the notes that all content um, collection managers have to fill when they acquire a new fonts or collection, uh, and that lists the criteria and the preservation intention that they have. Um, the second is the one that is produced by the signal specialists, the, the evaluation of different methods to normalize the content, and the, the one that is chosen finally and a tutorial uh, to, um, to improve consistency between th the ways we will do uh, the, these normalization, um, either um, uh, step by step um, with, with screen screencasts for, uh, for our uh, colleagues, um, non-IT non colleagues, or um, like um, 
command lines and um, information for, for our IT department for batches. Um, and I will conclude in a few um, points that I think are important for us to, to highlight, which is one, uh, of course, data normalization is complex. Uh, we know that, we acknowledge that. Uh, but um, we have to remember also that um, um, file formats are sometimes arbitrary uh, in that creators uh, don't use the, 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 the software uh, in, a, in a way that, that's always expected uh, by us or by the designers. So we, we, we're trying to take into account this. Uh, and that's why, as, as my colleague said, we're deciding things on a, oops, on a, on a case by case uh, process. Uh, and that means we have to be systematically recording all uh, decisions we make uh, and the criteria that led to the final decision. And finally, um, we don't want normalization processes to happen um, unnoticed or under the hood. Uh, we want them to be an occasion to share knowledge and know-how uh, with uh, the, 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 the rest of our colleagues. And um, yeah, basically we, we, don't, we, we think that on the long run we don't want to, to keep playing this, this uh, business versus IT um, game. And, and uh, instead we, we would like to be all of us digital archivists with, of course, different backgrounds talking to each other. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we're going to be roving around with the mic if anybody has any questions. Thanks for the um, fascinating insight. It strikes me that a lot of personnels were consumed in this process. Um, do you have a handle on how many of those, how much you actually spent essentially on this? And is that a sustainable process <laughs> across other ingest processes? Um, so yeah, we had some, some we're still in, in an ongoing reflection, but we had some, some feedback uh, from both our uh, collection managers and signal specialists who said, Wow, this is a huge work to, um, um, well, in general, prepare the information packages, uh, realize the transformation, document by commands in the manifest, etc. Um, so um, I think we 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 have not reached a, a maturity on this question of how we will do it on the long run, and and. We're still en we're envisioning some some both technical and uh, and organizational solutions um, to 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 make some progress, but yeah, we, we what we can say is that there's already <laughs> some feedback from the the operational level saying uh, that's super interesting. We we learned a lot from the process, but at some point we'll have to to streamline a little bit. Maybe you want to say something? Um, uh, there's a online follow-up to that, which I think is good to take, uh, from Jack O'Sullivan of Preservica. Uh, I realize it's the early days of establishing this kind of social construct to do this, but um, have you any feeling for how much of uh, the process you can reuse the next time now? Are there things that have happened in this first few cases that you know you'll be able to build on? So getting to the scaling point, is, is, is there things you can take forward? We, I think we, we are quite accustomed to industrialize our processes somehow. In here, we are really discovering those things, and that's, that's how you may feel that is very, very, uh, how I say, <laughs> workflow of uh, implying uh, th th those many people. We come from uh, the digitization, digitization, digitization <laughs> processes where everything is very streamlined. So. It, it takes time to, to be able to be so mature about what you do that, that things can go very smoothly and, and very in you know, an industrial way. So, and that's why we, we take those, those time to document and then make it 
repeatable and shareable by, by everyone. Okay. This answer the question. Hi. Uh, and my question is the uh, format and normalization include only collection or institutional archives, administrative documents? Not sure about the, the question, but <laughs> I will try to answer it somehow, and the author will complete. Oh, Alex. Uh, we are doing that on the, the items that are given to us or that we acquire, and we try to normalize them in order to disseminate it, them easily, or at least in, in a way we can do it. So yes, we change the items we collect, and this is part of the process of deciding if we keep the original ones or not, depending on whether we lose a lot of information of, or not. Like in the PSD example, we will keep the PSD because, of course, there is a lot of, of loose in, in the transformation. But this, this is not something that is always the case. I'm not sure I answer your question, but that's fine. I, um, I actually have a comment and following up that a question. Um, I think uh, the fact that you emphasize the role of the collection manager in engaging with the actual file content and uh, playing a major role in taking the first uh, format transformation decision based also on preservation intent is like really crucial. And, and um, Following from that is, it's kind of a new task that's coming uh, more and more, that will take more and more time of, from the collection manager's uh, uh, resources. Um, how, how did that go down? <laughs> sort of, uh, is the institution willing to avail more resources for that kind of work or uh, collection managers? How, what's the, co the reaction of the collection managers? Um, how open are they to take on that kind of work? <laughs> yes. right. um, so, um, uh, this, is a, this is a crucial question, <laughs> thank you. Um, in fact, we, for the moment, uh, we, we didn't, um, uh, create new uh, new functions, new digital contents uh, collect, uh, managers. Uh, it's um, uh, the collection managers we are talking about. Uh, we, we just talked about our um, uh, content specialists uh, in uh, their physical form, and uh, we are uh, accompanying them to, um, to extend their competencies to uh, digital contents. Um, uh, for me, it's very important to... Um, uh, to accumulate, to accumulate um, uh, skills, uh, com uh, their competencies on, uh, on uh, what they, they already know uh, in the in the physical uh, world, and uh, what was um, very um, striking uh, during the the use cases we just uh, talked about is that uh, it was very natural for them to formulate a preservation intent. They had, uh, they had absolutely no problem to uh, list what was important to preserve and to give access to. Even if, even if there were absolutely not uh, digital uh, specialists. And the, the, the question about the human resources question is just after the, the step just further. So we, the roles that we described already exists in our, in our institution. The next step is going to the human resource and says, saying we have these, these needs, could we please um, Inserts them, insert them in, in the in the missions of, of some some new 
new agents. Thank you. Uh, we're out of time for questions. Yeah, um, I think we're I think we're out of time. We need to move on. But thank you all very much. Thank you.